Hello everybody, George Kenner. We're gonna do something interesting with this in a minute. But first, I wanna give a shout out to Alicia Pate. I watched a YouTube that she did. I'm gonna put a link to her channel where she was basically explaining how two different brands of CO2 laser worked. And as you know, I've said that I'm really seriously looking into a CO2 laser. But CO2 lasers and diode lasers, it's about having the right tool for the job. So I went into the website and I had, or into Facebook, into um, Laser Lounge, and I'll put a link down in the description. So I went into Laser Lounge. I met some of the people and I asked a question because I had seen someone engrave on a wine bottle. I thought, could you do it on a beer bottle? And then I started thinking, when I was uh, just a few years ago, there were just three of us, and we used to call ourselves the Three Tontos. And what we would do is we would brew beer, we'd save up our beer bottles, and we'd make custom IPAs. Well, we always came up with names for them, and it seemed as though when we'd make two batches, we'd mark the bottle so that when we refrigerated it, we knew what we had. So I thought, you know, if I had had this laser then, I could have custom engraved each one of my bottles. So from a business aspect, that's maybe even a product that you could manufacture. Now, this is a Grolsch bottle, and what it does is it has a resealable cap on it. So we used to save these bottles and we would we would reuse them so what I thought was you know I wonder if you could do it after the fact and give it to somebody as a birthday present so I went and bought this one and I'm gonna take the label off now Alicia for all everything that you've given me let me give you a little hint I found this I was listening to it it's called Superzilla I was listening to an advertisement on one of my favorite radio talk shows in the morning and they featured Superzilla now it's entirely biodegradable so I really try and stay away from chemicals as much as I possibly can now I used it to take the labels off of these two beer bottles and I'm trying to think of something interesting to do with those so I'm gonna have to take these labels, take at least one of these labels off. Then I'm gonna paint it with tempura paint. This will take a while, so it'll show up later in the video. And then I'm gonna take it and put it on the roller that came with my first purchase of the X-Tool D1. Now, this is really a nice rotary device. It'll fit perfectly, but it is not as nice as my X-Tool R. A2, which will hold either this beer bottle, a coffee mug, an irregularly shaped cup. I don't want to get this one messed up. And if this one breaks, I think I got it figured out. I'll show you how I do that in the setup here in a minute. Now, at the end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is a glass that I made for one of my friends. It has a engraving on the bottom and then on the sides. So we're going to package this up. I'm going to cut some cardboard and put it in a box that I got from Amazon. I really believe in reusing everything. And these, I'm thinking of a way to reuse these. So you may want to subscribe and see if I come up with something. Now, I was watching YouTube, and I got these beer glasses. Now, what I saw was that if you engrave on the inside of this with a CO2 laser, you're supposed to be able to keep the carbonation in the beer a little bit longer. So I bought two. One of them I'm going to engrave on the bottom from the inside. And there's a way to do that. And I actually found out making mistake. I took tempura paint and I put it on the outside. And I wanted to see if I could get a little better etch on the inside. So I thought I didn't really want to affect the, the texture on the inside of the glass, but what I was looking to do was to get a, a, a more frosted look on the outside of the glass. Well, you know what it did? It, it etched the inside of the glass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip these over. I'm going to paint these black on the bottom. Now, again, back to the right tool. I think this is abs this is too tall to put in, say, a Glowforge. But if you have something like a, lar a diode laser that you could sit on a couple of boxes and put on top of this, height is really no restriction. When I'm looking at the, the laser that I would like to buy, 
that's a consideration, how deep it'll go. Now, it's not the end-all, be-all, and I have a limited amount of space back over there, but it is something that I'm considering. Okay, everybody, let's grab our safety glasses. Hello, everybody. Yesterday, just as I started to engrave the beer bottle, someone showed up kind of unannounced, but I couldn't be happier that they took the time to come and visit me. I didn't get to finish the video, so you'll notice the change in clothes. Before I go any further, I wanna share with you, I have a friend that has multiple PhDs and one of them happens to be in chemistry. I was concerned that by trying to engrave a beer bottle with the beer still in it, that there's a couple of things that could have happened. One is I could have activated the CO2 and just basically popped the top off the bottle. The other is that the bottle could explode. So I called him and I said, what do you think, Terry? Terry says, you know, that's why they call it an experiment, George. I'm not sure that the CO2 we combine based upon the amount of carbonation in the bottle and they, um, the, the laser in no way, shape or form gets hot enough to boil the beverage or the liquid inside. As a matter of fact, I know that they can do this because I've seen it with um, bourbon bottles and bourbon bottles have a much higher alcohol content where there's really very little alcohol in beer, generally less than six or seven percent. So I decided what I would do is I take every safety precaution I could, I fully taped the bottle. Every place where I wasn't going to engrave was taped. I said that I was going to paint it with tempura paint. I actually painted it with the thinnest coat of zinc galvanized compound that I could, cold galvanizing compound. Different people will call it different things. And I put down towels, sheets. I stayed right next to the electrical. I put on my safety glasses. I did everything I possibly could. Terry was emphatic, if it pops, it could make a mess. So I, I geared up for it and this is what happened. Yes, you cannot engrave on a beer bottle. I took and I did the experiment. It was something that I thought if it worked, it would be very cool to be able to give to a friend. But don't discount this. If you go out and you buy beer bottles, and you can, or if you're a custom brewer yourself, you can take and use one of these machines with one of uh, the R, RA2s or even the standard roller and get tremendous results and be able to manufacture a really nice bottle and give it to somebody or reuse your bottles on a constant basis. I know I brewed before and I probably would have done this. Now, I do have an affiliate link down in the bottom after I bought my machine. They offered me an affiliate relationship and it does help a little bit in paying for things like the Adobe Photoshop and um, the Creative Cloud Suite that I use to edit my videos. So well, I figured why not? But I'm, if you want to use the link, fine. If you don't, it's not a big thing. I'm still going to keep making the videos. I said that you could take and engrave one of these. Well, here's the bottom. And if this doesn't show up in the camera when I edit, I'll put a better one in, uh, a better picture in. I had taken the tempura paint and put it on the inside. This I think is just a little too thick to get through and give the etch. It did leave a mark in the bottom of the glass. I don't think that th this will work as I saw it on the YouTube. I'll put the link down on the bottom to create more effervescence from the beer by having the engraving inside. It's really kind of interesting. When I took the picture, <laughs> I, I showed it to Terry of what had happened. He says, well, that's why they call it an experiment. And he started to make fun of me. And I says, well, I'm gonna go do some wine next. And he says, you're a troublemaker. Well. It was kind of funny because I just bought this and I thought, you know, Troublemaker by Austin Hope, that's really pretty funny. He didn't even know that at the time that I bought this. I'm going to tape this off. I'll see if I can get Troublemaker on. If you subscribe, you get to see it in the next video. What's coming forward? I'm going to buy a CO2 laser. I've started my research. It's going to go right over in that corner. Some of the things I'm finding are very interesting. Um, I'll probably do the 
video series in three parts. One is what's ta those things that I'm evaluating right now and why I'm seeing it. And then if it's possible to go visit somebody that has one of these machines, I may go do that. And then the third will be the delivery and setup of the machine that I buy. If there's anything I can do for you, I put my email address in the comments, write to me. People are surprised that I will do this. Somebody recently made a comment that, you know, they thought I was in a studio. This is my garage. I really keep things clean. I feel as a safe work environment is the only way to go. Keep all your safety equipment and everything there and ready. But if you've got a question, you can email me and I will respond. All the best to everybody. Get off the couch, turn off the iPad, get away from your phone, go out in the garage and make something. I'm going to do something with these beer bottles. I just haven't made up my mind what they still have value. There, there's something that can be done the, to these that make them so that they just don't go into recycle. If you can think of something that I could do with these, please let me know. I think maybe I'm going to engrave this one and put a little message on it and uh, give it to somebody. These are reusable bottles. When I was a kid, we, recycling came with every kid in the neighborhood would run around and get bottles. This would be worth like a penny. And, but a penny in those days, I was, you know, you add up 50 cents, you was rich. I wish you all the best. I hope you subscribed. Thank you.